Hi, in this Lightboard session, we're going to talk about Cloud Hub load balancers. Now, load balancers are useful when you have multiple workers and you need to distribute the load between them. So you've probably had a look at the notion of a Cloud Hub worker. So this would be where you need your Mule runtime so that it can run your application. So this would be the Mule runtime. This is an EC2 instance running your Mule runtime with your application deployed in it. Now, you can have multiple workers. So if you need to spin up multiple workers so that you have two or more, then this is really why we need a load balancer. But even if you only have one worker, if you want to do things like zero downtime deployments, then the load balancer will give you a point that you talk to, which can then shield you from the swapping in and out the existing application with a new one. So that's another reason for having a load balancer. Now, when you deploy a Cloud Hub application, it will spin up an entry in what we call the shared load balancer. So the shared load balancer is something that's always there. And it is the thing that when you use a URL like my app dot, so if I go to whatever my app is dot, whatever the region is, dot cloudhub, dot io. So that's going to point to the shared load balancer. So it will sit in between the client and the application that you have deployed into Cloud Hub. And it will load balance between any of those workers. Now, this shared load balancer is non-configurable. You can't go and do things like put your own certificate in there. So you don't get to do your company certificate. It is using a MuleSoft hosted bit of infrastructure. So we use our certificate to protect the secure connection. Now, for customers who want to not have people going to some sort of cloudhub.io URL, then this is naturally not going to work either. So we would call those a vanity domain. So if you want a vanity domain in front of your applications, then that's where we have to think about using a shared load balancer. So this relies on us having an overall VPC. So VPC, virtual private cloud, bit of Amazon terminology. So AWS has this idea of virtual private cloud partitioning off your Amazon ecosystem behind a firewall. So you can set firewall rules. That's what you get with a VPC. But the other thing that we get to do is that we get to use what we call a dedicated load balancer. So dedicated load balancer, as the name suggests, is dedicated to you and your use. So it sits inside your VPC. It has your certificate. You can have your domain. So if you want pointing at this thing, then that would be the vanity domain, as we talk about. But it gives you an option that is not shared. It's contained within your VPC. And a few more configuration options, like the certificate side of things. Another feature of the dedicated load balancer is the ability to sit in front of multiple applications. So if I have other apps and I want to have the dedicated load balance send different paths to different apps, then the one dedicated load balancer can service many applications. So that's another difference, difference between the dedicated load balancer and the shared load balancer. So to summarize the differences, more control over security, so certificates, the ability to use your own domains, and it can sit in front of multiple applications and send those send the traffic to the different applications.